Hi there, this is Ethan Tapper, the Chittenden County Forester, and I'm here today to help you learn to identify northern red oak. Now in Vermont, we have a several species of, of oaks um, that grow here, but northern red oak is by far the most common. So if you hear people talking about oak, they're normally talking about northern red oak. Now the first thing to notice about northern red oak is its bark. Um, its bark is a bluish chrome gray, stands out distinctively from adjacent trees by how dark it is. And as it gets larger, you'll see that these vertical cracks, fissures, develop in the bark. And there'll be inside those cracks a line of a reddish or an orangish color. That is a good characteristic for identifying northern red oaks. Now as the trees become larger, those, the, the areas between those cracks will become more distinctive. So it'll become these, these vertical plates. I've heard them referred to as sanded off ridges, so it's like a, a thin ridge was developed here in the bark and then it was just sanded off with a sander. Or people refer to it as ski trail bark because it looks like if you're looking at a ski mountain and you can see those trails converging and separating, that's what the surface of this bark and these vertical ridges look like. So another good characteristic to use for northern red oak if you have them is leaves. So the leaves of northern red oak they have these many sharp pointed jagged looking lobes. So these are the lobes here. Each one of them ends in a little falcate hair. It's just a little pointy tip. And they go all the way like that, all the way around the, the leaf. I've heard people as a, as a memory trick say red oak, red like flames, and that these lobes look like flames. Um, these leaves are polymorphic, so they will have a slightly different appearance depending on where they are in the tree. At the top of the tree, these sinuses, the area between these lobes, will be much deeper, so it'll be a smaller leaf, but it'll be thicker and hardier and a lot shinier. At the bottom of the tree, these sinuses will be less pronounced. Um, you will still have this shape, but it'll just be less deep sinuses around it, and it'll be thinner. Those are called shade leaves. So this is a good example of what uh, the bark looks like on a younger red oak tree. So you can see that the bark is this dark chrome gray and it's already starting to develop these, these slight vertical cracks, which have that orangish, uh, reddish line. Between those cracks, the bark is this darkish chrome gray, and it can actually be very shiny when the tree is small. So here in northwestern Vermont, we see red oak mostly um, on south-facing slopes and in areas with really, really dry, well-drained soils. So sands, gravel, stuff like that. Um, Oak will also creep up into some sites with richer, deeper, moister soils, but it tends to be more competitive in these areas where soils are drier. So you might see it, at least in the Champlain Valley, you might see it in the mix with some of these other species like sugar maple and white ash, but more commonly you'll see it mixed with red maple and beech on uh, south-facing slopes, dry soils. Let's say you're driving along a road where um, on one side of you is facing south and the other side is facing north, uh, in the fall, oak trees will hang on to their leaves longer than most other trees. So once the, the leaves of the maples and the birches and the ash and everything else have fallen, um, the oak, oak leaves will remain as this sort of rusty reddish brown color. Um, and if you look up on these south facing slopes, you'll see just on those south facing slopes uh, just a coating of, of oak trees as evidenced by that uh, rusty brown colored leaves. Another thing that's really interesting about red oaks is that they produce acorns. So you, you probably all know what an acorn looks like. Um, a red oak acorn is an amazing source of food and energy both for animals, so everything from turkeys to deer to bear will really really love to eat red oak acorns, um, but also for the seedlings. So the way that red oaks reproduce is they're one of these species that we call an advanced regeneration dependent species, which means that most of the time they regenerate, they create new young seedlings in advance of a disturbance. So uh, the contrast is that some of these other species like the birches, like aspen, will just produce a lot of seeds and carpet the landscape with them um, and hope to find an area where there's been a big opening. Those species um, mostly need larger openings in order to be successful. What red oak does is the seedlings sprout and they, they use the energy in that acorn to put down a deep, deep tap root, and they don't need to even really produce their own energy to photosynthesize or anything like that for a pretty long time. Um, they're content to just sit and just feed off that acorn and wait for something to happen, wait for another tree to fall over, wait for there to be some sort of a, 
uh, a windstorm or an insect or disease outbreak, something that creates the space where they can, with that deep taproot, shoot up into the overstory. So one of the difficulties of having a seed that is so full of energy and so valued by wildlife is that it's very difficult to, to have that seed get to become a little seedling. And that, the reason for that is because everything is trying to eat those seeds, those acorns, as fast as they can. Um, and so it's estimated that 50% of acorns uh, never get off the tree. So they're parasitized, they're eaten before they ever even get a chance to fall. Once they're on the ground, about 98% of those seeds are also parasitized, eaten, don't get to sprout. And so one of the ways that oaks manage this is by coordinating when they produce their seeds. So across large regions, um, oak trees, we think through, through chemical pheromone signaling um, and other, and other uh, signaling mechanisms, that they will essentially coordinate when they're gonna produce a lot of seeds. So they'll produce no seeds for a couple of years and then all the oaks in over a huge region will produce a bumper crop of seeds, thus overwhelming the predators of their seeds. Um, if they were produ to produce a lot of seeds every year, what would happen is that the populations of the predators of their seeds would rise um, because they would have such good food and then it'd be more and more difficult for those acorns to sprout. Um, this coordination of when they produce their seeds is called synchrony. And, um, and the process of producing a lot of these seeds is called masting. So mast is uh, tree seeds that are valuable food for wildlife. Um, in the case of acorns, we call them hard mast, so something, a berry like a raspberry or a cherry we would call soft mast. Um, and so we call these years when the oaks produce this bumper crop mast years.